Meanwhile, the River State Police Command has confirmed it will fully comply with the Federal High Court's judgment barring its involvement in the October 5 local government elections. This announcement came just 24 hours after key members of the People's Democratic Party, led by State Chairman Aaron Chukwemeka, staged a protest against the election being conducted by the River State Independent Electoral Commission. Protesters marched to the headquarters of the Department of State Services and the State Police Command in Patakat, urging both agencies to respect the court's ruling and withdraw from participating in the poll. While the police assured adherence to the court order, they emphasized that it would not prevent them from addressing any potential security concerns during the election. Joining us to discuss the political impasse in River State is a public affairs analyst, Gonsville Jumbo. Uh, Mr. Jumbo, thank you so much for joining us. It's always my pleasure being here with you. So as regards the latest um, developments uh, in River State, uh, what is your take or your reaction to the statement of the, or by the governor, Simonalaya Fubara, as regards um, the alleged complicity on the part of the IGP and the federal court judge and what the citizens are equally saying? I think... I think for me and uh, other people, whether indigent or resident in River State, I think it's about disappointment, big time disappointment. The police waited for everybody to go to sleep. When everybody has gone to bed, about midnight, you know, precisely 10.44 p.m., that's when the police issued a press statement, you know, saying they will not be part of the election and that the, the legal department of the uh, Nigeria police force has advised the River State Command to stay away from the, from the election and citing uh, court judgments and all of that. Uh, but, you know, as much as we are disappointed, as much as maybe in a way, are we actually expecting so much from the Nigeria police? Over time, has the Nigeria police acquitted itself well in such a way that it will end the respect of Nigerians? Action after action, incident after incident, you know, act, uh, uh, look at the governor, the same governor. On the 30th of October last year, they were firing water canisters at him. And some people said they were even using live ammunition, you know, whatever. Now, the same governor you are going to illegally, in a hoodlum way, in a rogue manner, access a facility that is under his care without authorization in the middle of the night. What kind of conduct is that for a state institution, for an institution that is funded by taxpayers' money? What kind of you know, uh, conduct is that? Let me also draw the attention of the Inspector General of Police. Uh, I'm happy he's a PSD holder. It makes me happy because I think he can connect to what I want to say. The police is bound constitutionally to provide security of lives and property of Ni for Nigerians across the 36 states, across the 774 local governments of Nigeria, court order or no court order. The constitution is the ground norm, is the overriding, overarching law over every other law, over every other court order. So if the police says for this election, they are not going to provide security for the people of River State, let Kayode Egbotokun be, be put on notice that that is a constitutional violation and he can be charged for it because violating the constitution is a higher crime than any other crime. Let him be put on notice. But for us, for Rivers people, we, the media community, professionals, the organized private sector, the fishermen, the whoever, students, youth, everybody. I think everybody is upbeat okay. about tomorrow. 
Uh, okay, well, of course, we see that also resonates with the people of the state saying that they want the election to hold. But then uh, PDP um, representatives have come out to say that, you see, RCX should not be the one to conduct this election. And um, I'm, I'm wondering if that is born out of an unfounded fear or probably they feel that RCX has been compromised. Uh, but first of all, isn't that neither here nor there? You don't want to attend a party, and you still want to determine how that party runs. You want to determine who dances, which music is played, which DJ performs, and all of that. Where does that happen? The PDP has pulled out of the election, even when it is its own person, the governor of the state, that is superintending over the election. Imagine that. You pull out, you say you're not interested, you're not contesting, and then you still want to determine how the election goes. First of all, who told you that it is not RCEC that will conduct the election? The law in place, the extant law, you know, the River State Independent Electoral Commission Act of 2018 mandates the commission to conduct elections in River State, and that commission is bound by law to conduct the election in such a way that everybody is carried along. Remember also that law bars every court, that no court proceedings can stop an election in River State, that same law. So the PDP should just relax. It is not contesting. Why is he bothering himself? Why is he bothering himself? Uh, okay, I mean, so they should just keep calm and just watch events play out. All right, so me, I don't want to attend the party. What's my business with what happens at the party? All right, so as regards how the election will play out um, in the states, uh, you know, uh, voter apathy, public confidence when it comes to this election, how do you think it will play out with um, a police force saying that it will adhere to court rulings, but then if there's a security threat, it will still intervene? How are we so sure that, you know, there won't be any sort of violence being perpetrated? Uh, by an arm or, or a security apparatus that's meant to actually protect the people during an, uh, a, de a democratic process? We, we wouldn't be looking too far off. You know, when I appeared on your program days ago, I talked, I, you know, flagged the issue of political rhetoric. When somebody who is a leader, who is followed, who is respected, who is, you know, a lot of people see him as a role model, comes to the public and is, you know, using political rhetoric to invoke, to incite, to, you know, stir violence. What do we expect? The witch, if the witch cries in the night and the baby dies in the morning, we don't have to look too far. We will go looking for the witch. It's simple. Among all the political actors, who has been calling for violence? Who has been, you know, engaging in acts and speeches that stir violence? Somebody was saying some days ago that nobody has the monopoly of violence. Who is talking about violence? The oh. governor has not talked about violence. The candidates have not talked about violence. The political parties have not talked about violence. It is only him that is talking about violence. Where is the violence coming from? The reverse people want to go to the polls and just elect who they want. They want to activate the grassroots system. Okay. This has been the cry, the yearning of the people of Nigeria across all these 773 local governments. Now, thank God, among all these failings, you know, the Buhari administration added to the current administration, uh, aside all their failings, they've been able to entrench this legally, you know, even having the apex court in the land, the Supreme Court, to entrench it legally, well, that henceforth, well, not only will the grassroots be run by the local governments, they will be funded directly from the federation account. Okay. Now, a part of that is that it can only happen through an elected government. The people can't wait to okay, have elected uh, governments in the grassroots. All right, got this you. governor wants to make that happen. Mm. So why would anybody want to work against that? All right, uh, and I can you. Uh, thank you and very you much. We may not me we may not be that able there will to... be no violence across the twenty three local governments. God will understand. Thank you so much for your contribution. We can't go beyond this uh, at this particular time, but then we appreciate your contribution. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the opportunity. It's always an honor being with you.